We've got Active Directory set up, so the next step is to let our clients get IP addresses. Let's check that out. Okay, so last episode we did um, setting up our Active Directory, our domain controller, and a couple of those components in the domain controller, of course, DNS, which is a domain name system, because we all know that when we go to a website like youtube.com, we're not really connecting to youtube.com, we're actually connecting to the underlying IP address that is, and the naming system is just something there to help us, give us a common name for us to be able to get to that site. Otherwise, nobody's going to remember, you know, 18.45.36.28 or whatever that is. No, you, we're not going to remember that. We can remember YouTube. We can remember Microsoft, Google, all those different names. Makes it pretty easy. So the next thing that we need to do in our configuration is set up something called DHCP. And we're going to switch over here. And that's Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. This is one of the suites, pieces of the whole Internet Protocol suite. Uh, we have DNS, you know, LDAP, DHCP, HTTP, BHP, all these, all these fun, you know, little abbreviations of everything. So, but dynamic host control, host configuration protocol is, is a network management protocol used on the internet protocol, whereby a DHCP server dynamically assigns an IP address number and other network configuration parameters to each device on a network so they can communicate. So you go, you plug in your, your you go, you pl either plug in your computer to your routers, like most people will get, you'll see that if you pull up a, command prompt, you'll get like most routers are like 192.168.1. something or dot zero dot something. They'll be like that. Some are 10.0.0. something. Um, so those allow us to connect to the internet, right? So we've got our IP address and then we need to know where our communication goes. That's the gateway. That would be your router. And then your router knows the next gateway, which then knows all the other gateways. And then that, yeah, and so on and so on. And that gets us populated out on the internet. Okay. So here I am at a computer and I type in my client and I type in IP config, which shows me what my internet settings are. And right now it's set to this weird 169.254 address. And that's one of these addresses that Microsoft has that is like, I don't know what to do. I'm just throwing up my hands. So who knows? Okay, now we can have it try and get a new IP address by typing IP config slash renew, right? That's go out and get me a new IP address. I need, I need something. I need information that performs a UDP uh, and probe into the network to try and find a DHCP server, and then if it finds it, then it's going to gather the information that it needs and apply it to the computer. Well, we're not getting anything here because, of course, we don't have our DHCP server set up yet. So here's our Active Directory controller, and here's our DHCP server control panel. First thing we need to do is we need to come in here, right click at the top, and we need to authorize this. So this, this is here, it's not authorized or connected into like our domain controller and other systems in here. So we need to authorize it. So I click authorize. It's just a really quick thing and, and done. And I can come down here and click. Now the little red down arrow that was on the IPv4 has moved to a check mark. So now I can set up a scope. So in a DHCP server, the we can set a range of what IP addresses we're going to send out. So I right click the IPv4, click new scope. So this is going to be my new set of IP addresses that I'm going to hand out onto my network. So it's a little wizard that comes up. So we're going to go next. We're going to go like main network uh, as a description. So what's our starting IP address? So I know that here on my domain controller, right? We had the other uh, video where we set this up. IP config, we can do that. So my main, the main controller is on 10.0.2.254. So this is the network that this is on. So I need to have a set of addresses. And then the subnet mask here is 255, 255, 255.0. So the 
network that this is on is the first three numbers here. So this is a class C, there's different classes. We can go over that at another point. But just to get through this really quickly, this is a class C network. So these first three numbers are what are kind of fixed on this network. And then the last number is what's going to be variable that we're gonna be able to put into our DHCP scope. Okay, so we're gonna do 10.0.2.100 to a 10.0.2.16. We don't need that many addresses. So we do need to set the subnet mask to our 255, 255, 255, 0. So there we go. And oops, I'm missing a zero there. Need 10 there, okay. There we go. We hit next. Not a valid range, oops. I need to go 116, there we go. Now I've typed correctly now, okay. so. The next thing in our little wizard here is add exclusions. So if I want to exclude any IP addresses, so I'm going to, if I was going from 50 to 150, I wanted to exclude like 100 to 110, then I would add those here. Typically, we're not doing this unless we're trying to fit all this in other systems that are on a network, which we're not doing right now. Okay, lease duration. So this is how long that IP address is going to be valid for on that computer that's getting it. So the computer calls, the DHCP server says, I need information. The uh, server says, okay, here's your information, but in eight days, that information is gonna be no good again, and you're gonna have to ask me again in eight days. So it's just how often do you want it asking for this information. Some people go really short if they have a lot of computers coming and going on a network. Um, it's like a public network, like a Starbucks or something like that, that has, you know, a public Wi-Fi. They might set this down to a day because people usually aren't going to stay more than a day. And if it's holding that IP address, because that's what it puts it in the table, that holds it for your computer. And if it does that for eight days and you have tons of people coming in and out, then it's gonna run out of IP addresses and nobody's gonna be able to connect. So in that case, you would set it to a day. And then once everybody's done and out, then they can go. You can even set it shorter. I mean, if they have run into problems with more than 254 people coming in and out of Starbucks, which it could be a possibility, they might set it to more like six hours. And then it would recycle those addresses and be able to get, continue to maintain producing IP addresses for people on the network. Okay, so configure DHCP options. You have to configure most DHCP options before clients can use the scope. This is very true. Do we wanna configure those now in the wizard? Of course we do. Okay, the first thing is our default gateway, our router. That's our 10.0.2.2. We can see that here in our domain controller, the 10.0.2.2 is our gateway here. So that's what we're gonna to have to tell our computers that connect where the gateway is. Okay, our domain name that we're going to be handing out as the parent domain is going to be tomstechshow.com. So, and then to configure, they need a DNS server and it's already added this computer here, which is 10.0.2.254, which is the domain controller that we set up last episode. Okay, so WINS server. So this is Windows Internet Naming Service, which typically is not used anymore. And NetBIOS, this is a very old, protocol. Um, we don't really use it. I don't really use it anymore for anything. Some old devices, some very old devices that you might have on a network may need this in order to communicate. It just, if you need that, then you can put it in. But today's day and age, we don't really use this much. So, okay. So now, do we want to activate this scope now? Yes, I would like to activate it. I want it to work. Okay, we're at the last page, click finish, and now we have some more information here. So I can open this up. This is my scope, and I can come down here and see my address pool. I'm going from 10.2 to 100, 10.2 to 1.16. My leases, there's no leases right now. This is the computers when they get an IP address. They'll come in here, show up in this lease list. Um, we can reserve IP addresses if you want a particular computer to always get the same IP address. Um, you can put a reservation in take the MAC address, apply it to the IP address. It will always get the same thing, which is kind of handy for um, 
devices that you're initially setting up on the network you want to know what it is i got a new you know you get a new uh wall plug you know that's um on the network a new like smart plug like this like this is a little um this is a little smart plug you know i want to be able to know what ip address this is i can go in and grab the mac address the id off of this thing put it in there in the reservation then when i go to start it up and it plugs in and it gets an ip address when it connects to the network i already know what the ip address is so that makes it that pretty easy okay plug that back in the wall all right now so we have scope options these are our dns server domain name there's uh, a lot of different options in here that that we can send to the clients but these are the main ones um so we need uh figure options why do we not have the router should be in there which is 10.0.2.2 i don't know why that wasn't in there so good thing we looked there okay okay so now we have our router that would send there that's good that we found that Okay, so now that our DHCP server is running, I can do IP config renew on my box here, my client, and it's going to go out, grab an IP address, give it to me, which is just done by 10.0.2.100. I check back here to my domain controller, and there is my desktop. It hasn't been named very well because I just installed it, but it is showing this desktop name dot Tom's tech show because that in my scope options, the domain name that I'm using was that. So it's passed all this information to it. And if I come here, I should be able to jump out and yes, I can get to the internet and be able to browse the internet because I now have all the settings necessary in order to reach the internet through the TCP IP DHP and all that fun stuff. Okay. There we go. So that's our next step that we're moving through. Um, the next piece is going to be joining that computer to the domain. And we're going to jump through all those steps. And then we're going to work into policy and a bunch of other things, kind of makes, you know, have some fun with it, um, change different settings and stuff on the clients and different things like that in the future. So stay tuned. This is going to be, again, a whole series of things. So if you want to follow this, remember to like, share, subscribe to my channel then when i post more videos about this you want to keep learning about windows and how windows works and how servers and networks are working then you can just stay tuned and they'll keep coming all right well thanks for watching this one take care